Let's get started with this week's Boku no Hero Academia review. The dark, dark past. Yeah. The sad episode. Kind of. I'm going to do a basic rundown, and then we're going to kind of like hash this out. So the basic plot of this one is like... It is basically, oh man, kids are back. They're going to be like all learning about the shit and uh, about what they learned over their over their uh, uh, winter work studies. But forget about that. We're cutting over to uh, present Mike and Eraserhead heading off to a, a jail facility that seems to be surrounded by water. I don't know if this is the same one that All for One is in. It might be. Um, but the interesting bit here is that present Mike is having just a mental breakdown in his own head as he's talking to uh, Eraserhead on the way into this place and telling Eraserhead to calm down. Like, he... Like, President Mike himself is just losing his shit. He is freaking out at this idea of what has apparently been told to him before coming in. And they meet up with Kurogiri. Who is a Nomu? That is the thing I was not expecting. They they reveal that, apparently, that Kurogiri is a Nomu. Something that, based on everything else we have known prior, does not make any goddamn sense. That yeah, they would I... have this level of intelligence. Bo- oh, not even intelligence, just body shape. Yeah, like I all the no other ones are monsters. weird. Yeah, all the other ones are like weirdly out of proportion and bo- like full of bullshit. Um, monstrous beings with like wings and like large bulking arms and like like you said misshapen bodies yeah like they're they're kind of body horror monstrosities um the fact that kurogiri one who seems completely sane and is compacted into the size of any normal person perhaps a slight bit taller than most but still uh still just fine as far as like size goes him being a nomu was kind of a slap in the face to be like oh no this whole nomu thing is way more advanced than we thought so was he introduced in season two or was he well, it was one. Oh, okay okay it was when they had that first attack on ua yeah that was like the the climax of season one i believe so was he the prototype human type nomu it's unclear as far as that goes i would be heavily spitballing hmm um i highly doubt he was the first prototype um however what we do know is that kurogiri has probably been around for a, quite a few years because the reason they brought in present Mike and uh, Eraserhead Eraser is apparently that what was used as a base to make up Kurogiri was their dead teammate from their school days, and a person that they both knew very closely. So do you think if Kurogiri could tap into his old persona he could use that quirk i think it from the way it was described it sounds to me like the thing that's keeping kurogiri together as a as a centerpiece is this kid and his quirk whatever it is so if they could somehow fully awaken their old friend Kurogiri would cease to exist? I think you might have fighting and dual personalities. Much much like it was mentioned, like we saw in this, I think you'd have personalities at war with each other. But is he no longer dead? 
now that he's Koro Geary? Here's the thing. we I don't even know. I don't know if he is actually dead. If when they grabbed the body, he was still barely alive. Because they said that they must have replaced the body at some point. I forget if they said the exact point at which they must have done it. I, I don't know. It seems very strange that his personality would still be there. Because as far as we know, outside of all for one, uh, one for all, unless there's something specific with his quirk, there there shouldn't be a way for him to have a personality after this. If he was already dead, like I, I'm actually curious here. Let me see here. What was his quirk? Cloud. He generates clouds uh, that can be dense enough that you can touch and carry relatively large amounts of weight. He can ride the clouds through the air and even use them to store objects. So he's basically Goku. He's just flying Nimbus. <laughs> uh, okay, so basically, I guess one of the super moves, or the only super move that's really mentioned here, is kind of like him creating a fog barrier around himself. Uh, it's called Cloud Cover. He creates a small cloud in front of his opponent, temporarily blocking their vision. While the opponent's distracted, he creates larger clouds around himself to hide within. Oh! Hmm. I'm going to assume that either there was more in the manga or that we're going to get more flashbacks if this detail is here. Either that or it was maybe like a, a bio page uh, in the manga. Uh, either way. So I don't see anything in that quirk that would allow him to hold his personality there. I have to assume that he was still somewhat alive when they took him and forced him in. So since Deku will have multiple quirks in the future, is Deku kind of a Nomu? I don't think in the same sense. It's not just jamming quirks in there. It's like... I don't want to put this. The way it's been described so far, it kind of seems like the human body can't withstand more than one quirk. And like you, you can even see how hard it was to get something like Todoroki to happen, where he did manage to get to through like selective breeding, as dark as that idea is. To have more, the human body wouldn't be able to withstand it. I think the only reason... Deku is able to do it is literally because of the quirk at the core of uh, One for All. Hmm. Like, the main quirk is just encapsulating the rest of them. Like, if you want to think of it this way, it's like, you take either the one big super pill, that'll, you know, get it done right away, or you take all these mini pills, that will probably kill you. <laughs> oh. Like, I guess, that, that's one way I guess you could look at it. Um... The interesting bit, uh, they do manage, through trying to, like, raise up memories and such, they do manage to get through to him, or what's left of him, I guess. Because, again, I don't, I don't really understand how he would have a consciousness. Again, unless... Because they kind of said that there's, like, multiple quirks working together inside of Kurogiri. Or at least that, that's what I managed to get out of it. This also opens up a whole lot of other kettles of fish on, like, dead heroes, potentially. Yeah, like, how many dead heroes are Nomu? Well, here's something to think about. Remember that person we just learned about that died? That was Endeavor's other son? Yeah? Feel like that might be a small hint. Hmm. So, are you saying or implying that Endeavor's dead son may be Dobby? I mean, that's been the fan theory for a while that what we've just learned lends a lot more credence to that idea. Hmm. Like, Dobby himself could be a Nomu as well. If Kurokiri's one. Well, who knows about the who knows about Dobby because we don't know shit about his past. Well, we do have the fact that Nomu have their old base personality, like the one Nomu that kept wanting to fight the strongest heroes was a boxer 
who wanted to fight the strongest opponent. He was an underground fighter, so I don't know if he was quite a boxer, specifically. Um, the the thought here is more along the lines of like what we've seen was base instincts, though, in that regard, like the the most basic version of that desire. Kurgiri's kind of on a whole other level there, though I guess technically he also has one main goal, even if that's anything like all the other shit is able to be caught or considered and taken in stride as well. Um, that other Nomo didn't seem to have that ability to to take in what was going on and adapt on the fly or to, to take that information in and understand how to go about it in a more human way, I guess. Kurogiri seems to have that ability to just consider what to do and how to do it, even if his main goal is just to keep Shigaraki safe. Hmm. And speaking about Shigaraki, it seems like he's being experimented on. Yeah, by this, by Dr. Eggman, who's got like a trimmed beard now. Or a trimmed mustache. And he seemed to have lost a lot of weight. Still seemed a little bit round to me. Maybe not quite as egg-shaped as before. Um, yeah. From what his dialogue seems to suggest, he's turning Shigaraki into a perfectly competent Nomu. Or forcibly trying to evolve his quirk further. Something along those lines. <laughs> the uh, We do get the word hospital. Out of, out of um, I believe his first name was Obero. Yes. Um, we do get that much out of him while he's like barely able to to give any kind of control out. Obero Shirakumo. Shirakumo. Okay, I couldn't remember exactly how the last name was pronounced. Um, yeah, we get the word hospital out of him. It's I don't know if he was trying to respond to um, Eraserhead. I don't know if those were the word he was trying to say was Shoto at first, or uh, Sh uh, or Eraserhead's first name. It could have been something else, but we definitely got the word hospital, which seems to be. They asked a bunch of questions, so it's hard to say exactly what he was ref like answering. That said, we still get that clip of Shigaraki probably being operated on in a hospital or being experimented on, I should say. Um, and it's been a long time, so I don't know if you've put this together. Was that the same doctor that told Deku's mom he didn't have a quirk? I totally forget. Why? What is your thoughts on that? There might be some shit that was told that was a lie. So Deku might actually have a quirk? It could be that. He could literally be there in place in order to, like, catch other quirks or get them taken. Like, that. that's something I'm curious about now, because I, I just found this. Uh, open image, a new tab. Here we go. I will send this to you. You tell me, because this guy looks very familiar. I think his mustache might be slightly different, but I think it's the same guy. Maybe? Let's see here. Actually, fuck it. Here, let me let me snag the actual video because I'm fairly close on that one anyway. Ah, uh, sad. Network error. Retry. Let's see if I can get a decent screenshot of him to send to you to make a point because we did get a close up of this fucker. Yeah, um, I'm looking at. Him on the Boku no Hero wiki. I was trying to avoid that so I wouldn't be spoiled on anything potentially. Oh. Yeah, there we go. I got a, I got a shot of him now. Okay. Let's see here. And then let me paste this here. That looks like the same guy. Yeah. Slightly spikier mustache. The eyeglasses are a little bit different. But otherwise, this looks like the same motherfucker. So your theory, why he told Deku he has no quirk? I'm not saying that he's lying. 
What I'm saying is at the very minimum, it seems like him being there to look at kids who get quirks might be a way for people like one for all or all for one. God damn it. Keep flipping around. People like all for one to like keep an eye on this one. This is the quirk he has. When we get a chance, we can take it later. Oh, okay. Okay. That said... There is also the chance that it would lead to people getting up, like kids getting abducted in their quirk stolen that way. Hmm. I don't think there would be a good way for him to like bring the kids into his business and not like get caught. More than anything, I feel like he's a spy. However, I could see him telling people that their kids do not have a quirk and then having some like ninja or whatever you call would call it to then seal what quirk they do actually have although at that point i don't know if the kid would be fully like the kid would be fully aware i would assume that he has a quirk Hmm. because like like i think was said before they they learn that they have a quirk by around age four It, it usually starts to manifest then So either Deku had a quirk that was very subtle and the doctor knows what it is and therefore had it taken after telling Deku's mom he had no quirk or Deku was just the unlucky one that didn't have a quirk in general. But this guy's still, you know, keeping tabs on good quirked people like kids with quirks to to later use for the villains. Interesting theory. Like, I don't feel confident enough to say anything about Deku specifically in this. Like, I don't have any confidence in any of what I've said involving him right now. But I do have enough confidence to say that this guy seems like he was keeping tabs on kids with quirks for later use. Hmm. I'm trying to think, like, where we left off in the in this. Sh- no, no, that's really it. Because the, la- the thing we get with this guy is him sp- experimenting on Shigaraki. And that's kind of where the episode cuts. And next time, I'll go like my villain academia or whatever it is. Yeah, it looks like they're they're uh, turning back the clock on the shit that happened. Yep, I'll go no villain academia. Yep. Finally. I don't know if there's enough episodes from the way Kaiser talked prior. Well, we have six more. We got six more. Yes, we do. Let's hope that's enough. Yeah, they they might be able to easily do it. I don't know if it, it'll be easy. It's going to be interesting, though. I'm I'm curious about where this leads, and I'm I'm certainly curious if we're going to learn more about this doctor. Hmm. I wonder who will be the central character in this villain arc will it be Shigaraki? For all we know it might just be a bit of um anthology episodes that like loosely link together hmm interesting like that that I think would be the most interesting if it's anthology episodes that then link together to lead up to whatever the hell happened in that town that we saw Shigaraki just kind of laughing maniacally after it was destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know what to expect from the villain arc. Whatever it is, it's set up. I I'm I'm definitely curious cuz there's apparently shit in that arc that explains shit that we've seen here. I'm curious if we're going to figure out what happened to Best Genist. Hopefully. Because all we know is, like, it seemed to be, he seemed to be abducted by uh, uh, Hawkeye, or whatever his name is. Hawks, Hawks. that's it. Hawkeye is Marvel. I know. I, when I said it, I'm like, wait a minute. No, that's Marvel. <laughs> yeah, Hawks. Um, I'm definitely hoping that explains that bit. Hawkeye. His superpower is incredible aim. Also brooding. I don't watch enough Marvel movies to know that for sure. Okay, maybe I'm more joking on the brooding, but I think that... I honestly don't know. 
you could be joking or not, I wouldn't have any idea. Yeah. I'm not too sure if he has as many trick arrows as DC's green arrow. Oh, that? No, he does not. Okay. I can I can guarantee you that much. He he most definitely does not. Hmm. Cause fucking Green Arrow has the most like Deus Ex Machina arrows you could ever ask for all the time. Boy, here's an arrow with a small piece of kryptonite to stop General Zod. I was gonna say Superman turned evil again. Well, I got my kryptonite arrow here. Good thing I got one. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Batman's throwing a batarang? Good thing I get this anti-batarang arrow. <laughs> oh man, that electric dude's coming at me? Cool, let me fire this arrow that wires him to the ground so he's grounded. <laughs> oh man, there's a guy that can fly- oh well, pull up my net arrow. Uh, What's that? I need to bury a body? Well, good thing I got this digging arrow here. If just it, fire, rapid fires arrows and shovel tips cop out. Just if, digging a hole. If Deus Ex Machina was a quirk, that would be amazing. Oh my god, that'd be so stupid. The problem is, would it be Deus Ex Machina for the villains or the heroes? Hmm, good point, good point. Uh, but, um... <laughs> no, no, it's... What? What? Oh god, I just thought of a stupid quirk. Proceed. Uh, we call him Captain Cutup. His superpower? He literally just comes in and gives you, like, rude lines to cut you up. Verbally. <laughs> He always has a, a, a smart remark ready to cut you up. So he has like super improvisational skills? Basic. I guess, but it's really only located towards like giving out a really nasty comment on someone. <laughs> like it, he can't do any stand up with it unless people just want to be like, he make a very good dominatrix actually. <laughs> Um, Kiryu, Kiryu wouldn't have to teach him a thing. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to take a 180 and go from heroes to villains next week. Uh, I guess so. I'm curious if we'll see heroes in the background at all. We'll, we'll probably definitely learn more about what the hell Hawks has been up to and how he's been interacting with the villains. Yeah, yeah. And the whole... And the whole probably set up for this like anti-liberation or meta-liberation thing yeah so i'm, cu I'm curious how that's going but because I, 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 this was actually part of the paranormal liberation war arc i'm i want to know what in the hell managed to sh like swindle heroes into this what what ideology or what spin on this ideology is dragging them into this idea? Hmm. We might find out a bit about it, but I would say not a lot. Oh, we'll see. Yep. So catch everybody then. Later.